I have a very familiar voice on for the entire program today, and it is uh, White House correspondent Bill Koenig, because we are carrying his newest book, Revealed, Obama's Legacy. Now, Bill says this about Obama's legacy. He says, it is hard to fully comprehend and extrapolate the extent of the present and long-term damage that has and will come from the eight years Barack Obama has been president of the United States. It will be much worse than God-fearing, Bible-believing Christians could have ever imagined. Under Obama, America has experienced the rapid deterioration in every area of life. He has had complicit media covering for him. He said he would fundamentally transform America. He has beyond our wildest nightmares. His Alinsky-style goal was to take down America as a superpower. I'll say more about the book as we move along, Revealed, Obama's Legacy. And in studio with me for the programming is Eric Barger. And Eric, you've read the book, as have I. Jan, I think it's an important book, especially when you consider the crossroad America is at. And Mm -hmm. I know that that phrase is used a lot, but America really is in a crossroads situation. And I think the church needs to recognize our responsibility and our our role at this point in time. Bill Koenig is a frequent on-air guest on Understanding the Times Radio. He's spoken at numerous Understanding the Times conferences. We'll say more about contact info later. Bill, welcome back. Always great to be with you and Eric. Thank you. Uh, What is the meaning of the title, Revealed? It's out of Luke. And the importance of Revealed, which is, uh, you know, from Luke 12, 2, For there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed, neither hid that shall not be known. And that's a title that came to me. I prayed about it. And that's the purpose of the book, is to reveal what has happened the last seven and a half plus years of the Obama administration. And that's where the title came from. Well, and you serving in the White House press corps, I think you're giving us a little bit of inside baseball here, but here are some of the bullet points, and it's actually on the back cover. So some of the content that you're covering in the book that you're writing about revealed, you're revealing how he ran roughshod over the U.S. Constitution, undermined America's judicial system, became the world's number one promoter of lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, celebrated Supreme Court decision on same-sex marriage with a rainbow imaged on the White House, directed a destructive transformation of the U.S. military, lectured God-fearing Christians on how to behave, uh, became a Muslim apologist and defender of Islam in America, became passionate about Middle East refugees coming to America, expressed no emotion over Christians being persecuted and tortured for their faith, endangered Israel and U.S. Middle East allies by destabilizing the region, U.S. federal debt will almost double to $20 trillion. Federal Reserve debt increased over $4 trillion. Personal debt at record levels, and we could go on and on. Those are some of the things you track, Bill Koenig. Which ones do you feel are the most egregious? Well, I think the fact that he called himself a Christian and has taken positions that are in direct conflict with the Scriptures, LGBT, his position on dealing with the state of Israel, the fact that he has been so pro-Islam in his speeches to the Muslim world, his desire to see refugees from the Middle East and Northern Africa come to the United States, while not showing any emotion or passion or feeling to the plight of Christians that are being persecuted and slaughtered for their faith. So it's a combination of a lot of things, but the most important, Jan, is the fact that his positions, while calling himself a Christian, are a direct affront to the Bible. And numerous Christians, including Christian leaders, and I could actually name them, supported him, voted for him, actually, I think, would vote for him for a third term, which boggles the mind, Bill. Well, that's true. In the 2012 election, Obama received 48% of the Protestant vote, 48% of the Catholic vote, and only 20% of the evangelical vote. So the liberal mainline Mm -hmm. and churches and the Catholic Church, uh, he received a lot of support from them and still does to this day. Some of his defenders, which I write about in the book, really, quite honest, probably have very little understanding of some of the key areas that I spoke of here in the book. Muslim apologist, which is my chapter two, what he's done to our U.S. military, what he has done through his LGBT agenda, which I, uh, my title is LGBT, he owns it. His faith, a distortion of faith, I uh, read his book, Audacity of Hope, 
and read about his perspective on Christianity and uh, and the faith, and he how he twists the scriptures and twists words for his own benefit and his own agenda, and then at the same time kind of summarizing all the things that have happened. So if, if these Christian leaders, Jan, had the opportunity to read all these things that are in, in revealed, I can't imagine not changing their perspective on this person that's uh, called himself a Christian. And Bill, you write, you say, we're back to the perverse agenda again. And by the way, Bill and Eric, I mean, I think the tide turned in America and not in a good way, seeing the White House lit up with the colors of the gay rainbow, so to speak. And um, you write that uh, I think Valerie Jarrett was really behind some of that. Uh, Yeah, sometimes I think we already have our first female president with Valerie Jarrett, and you bring out the strong influence that she is over Barack Obama. But you write this, Bill, no earthly leader has done more to promote the lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender agenda in the U.S. and around the world than Barack Obama. He has done more to promote immorality and perverse sexuality than any man in history. That's quite a shameful honor. I would say any president in history would probably be even more specific. You know, he even boasted at one of his uh, LGBT Pride Month events that he'd done more than the 43 previous presidents combined to promote this agenda. This is something that was done the day that he took office, 2009. His White House staff put up the LGBT agenda in the White House website, which many of us read just in total disbelief that this was being posted in the context it was and now is. It's watered down a bit, but it right off the bat, get rid of don't ask, don't tell, get rid of uh, defense of the marriage, you know, elevating the LGBT to a civil rights position. It was under civil rights on the White House website. Uh, This is uh, the fact that he favored civil unions, which his campaign chairman later, David Axelrod, said he always favored same-sex marriage. He just felt that that would affect his vote, affect the vote that he would get from the Christian community. And so consequently, he took the civil union's position until May 2012 when he came out officially in favor of same-sex marriage. And then um, his two of his Supreme Court nominees had a very significant influence, Kagan and Sotomayor, had a very significant influence on the same-sex decision, which was last June 26th, 2015, uh, the day that they said that same-sex marriage is now a law of the land. And uh, that night he put uh, the image of the rainbow outside of the White House. Right. You're listening to Understanding the Times Radio. I'm Jan Markell. I have on the line from Washington, Bill Koenig. We are carrying his newest book, Revealed, Obama's Legacy. Find it at olivetreeviews.org, olivetreeviews.org. You can give us a call. It'll be in a forthcoming print newsletter, an e-newsletter letters as well. And Eric, you wanted to weigh in here. Bill, a minute ago, you mentioned that uh, many were shocked about the the different issues and especially about the LGBT issue. I think Americans might get the feeling that, you know, the the media is in complete concert with him on this. But uh, we know that there's a lot of people in the media who don't agree. Were there people on the left that were just as shocked or maybe put off by the way this has been handled? No, no, the left is just totally into this, Eric. I'd say about 85 to 90 percent of the media that we receive in America, and especially the large media organizations of, uh, from the major cities, they're completely into this. And the LGBT activists have worked their way into positions of influence in most major networks and most major papers. They have been behind the scenes promoting this. They have only provided a little bit of information. You know, occasionally they'll find a, a Christian to isolate and call a bigot and uh, make their life uh, more difficult. That's their agenda. And they, uh, unfortunately, they work their way into positions of influence in corporate America, within the educational system, and around the country. I mean, there's still a lot of us. There are still at least a half of us, and if not more, that do not favor this, because we understand what the Bible says. We understand that marriage is between man and woman, and it has been for 5,000 yeah. plus years. And the other side, they're so well positioned. Uh, they've worked their way into positions of influence in corporate America, the Fortune 500 companies. They've worked their way into positions of influence with the Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts. There's 250 LGBT activists in key positions mm-hmm. within the Obama administration. You also have a lot of LGBT activists that are now in the court system. So this has been a very active effort to pretty much forced this agenda on America where it's a very small percentage of the population that's even part of the LGBT community. 